Oh, so good to see your beautiful face. So um, good to see your face on that lovely background. Is that is that a padded wall? It, it's a padded wall. Um, yeah, That's it's a little very spenny. Well, you know what? It, I, I did a budget version because if you were to ask for a padded wall, it would be indeed spenny. But um, <laughs> I bought fabric in a shop next door to my house, some foam off a big website, and then my builder just attached it to a plank of wood. Well, panels of wood. So I've got a little studio wall at home. That's so great. Yeah, it's just, I've, I, I had to, it was getting, I was basically under a, a duvet or with a blanketed wall in my stepson's bedroom for like a year. <laughs> and I just, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I oh, know. It's just been mad. How have the last 12 months been for you? Mm. Um, well, uh, it's hard to um, think beyond the last three months, isn't it? Because yeah. I think that has been uh, quite desperate times and a test of the human spirit. And and um, so I, I think the first lockdown, there was a sort of excitement about it and a, a sort of new simplicity to life that felt quite welcome because it came off the back of a load of work. So I just felt like, actually, this is great. And, you know, all of that roman romanticizing, like, being a homeschooling mother, have you, I don't know if you ever did that, but I used to think I was capable of doing that. Oh yeah, how naive we were. <laughs> <laughs> so naive. I just, um, and you know, you'd sort of like lockdown one was like, oh, let's, um, you know, let's do an hour on Bowie and, um, you know, a three hour hike and just to sort of like the sort of those sort of things. And no, none of that really happened or at least it wasn't that successful. No. But so look, it's been up and down. It's been up and down the last three months, I'm sure. Well, it's un it's an unremarkable story. It's the same for everyone, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's been the most, you know, grounding situation I think any of us have been through. And like you say, you know, there was that, that weird sort of novelty factor in the first lockdown. And we all did think, oh, because I remember that first two weeks of lockdown, like, oh, my God, this homeschooling thing is going to be so fun. I know. I it's so much cool stuff. We were making like pirate ships out of cardboard boxes. Now it's like, come watch TV. Yeah. Watch TV, watch as much oh Netflix as you, because we're just trying to survive and get through this. I mean, that's, I that's literally all we can do. It's been but I Often think I've been re I've been living for your Instagram like Sunday night chats. Is it Sunday night or whenever I watch? Yeah, yeah Sunday night where it's like, um, you know, it just just real talk about how it's feeling and 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 also just energetically honest from you. It's just like. <laughs> It's just been, I've been there for that so, and oh, I've needed you. it so much. And yes, it's so important to say, yeah, I just sat my child in front of the TV for yes. four hours, which is something I always did as a kid anyway. Like Same. I was all, cause we didn't have a nanny or a no. babysitter. So you just, you just, the TV was your sort of, you know, childcare. But also it was like, you know, we weren't as connected as kids because we didn't have the internet. So I would literally get up on a Saturday, watch the raccoons, and then watch all of Live and Kicking, which is yeah. like five hours long. Yeah. And I think my parents weren't going, come on, let's, I don't even know where they were. I, God I know. knows, I didn't care where they were. I was having the best time ever. So I think we put so much pressure on ourselves these days. I know. And we do just have to like give ourselves a break because we're living through something extraordinary. So, I you know, know whatever. But look, I, I'm, I would also like to say thank you um, because you've given me some beautiful stuff to watch over the lockdown. I Hate Susie and Rare Beasts have been two <laughs> wonderful bits of escapism for Not me. relaxing by Not any relaxing, stretch. <laughs> but just so clever and brilliant as, as I obviously knew they would be. And, um, and it's so wonderful to see, because, you know, I've kind of known you on off yeah. since we were kids. And it's amazing yeah. to see where you're at now, which is, in a place where you are creating your own work and from the outside it seems like that is of paramount importance that you have that agency over your work is, is that mm. right yeah definitely I um I, I feel like um 
the last sort of four or five years professionally have been um, the most fruitful. And, and it's because, I guess it's because um, I'm just, I'm more confident. I, maybe that's an age thing. And, and also I just um, have learned how to be a bit more honest. So the, so all the work feels a bit more honest and actually people respond really well to that. And it feels like such a risk, that stuff, because especially nowadays, isn't it? Because everyone, everyone's just seems wildly um, opinionated, judgmental, or at least you're exposed to judgment yeah. so much, so much more. Um, so it was a bit, it was a bit terrifying, but it's gone so well. I, d I, I just feel, I feel like I should have bloody just talked about this stuff years ago. But again, I wasn't obviously in the right um, headspace or didn't have the tools to and the courage to say what I thought, I guess. I feel exactly the same. You know, I'm I guess I'm doing work now that I really give a shit about and that yeah. I really, really love. And I definitely didn't have the confidence to do that 10, 15 years ago. But I also don't feel like there was the space for you and I, as well as it being age and confidence, there is now also room to have like a very honest dialogue or creative outlet that possibly wasn't there before yeah yeah I don't know why but I don't know well I was speaking to someone about this yesterday because um I was doing an interview yesterday and they were talking about how they watched this Parkinson interview I did when I was like 21 or something 22 and it, it it's such a different time in terms of line of questioning like I look back at that, I can't even watch it actually. It just makes me cringe so much because it, the world looks so different. Mm. And and the things that people were allowed to ask you and the fact that we as whatever, women, it might be, a, maybe it's more of a female trait, were willing to open ourselves up to and, and just this absolutely, it's, without boundaries at all and this is a respected journalist you know what I mean it's um the times have changed so much and 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 for the better and yeah I agree I think I think um I think there's a uh, there's more space um and for women speaking honestly um but it's taken a while and it's probably still got a long way to go yeah I agree but I think you know you're one of the mavericks doing that like you are you're putting stuff on you know on the big screen on mainstream tv for us to tackle tricky subjects and what i've been so interested in watching rare beasts and i hate susie is that you understand pain so well like you 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 obviously have a deep curiosity about pain or tricky emotions and are willing to lean into them is that mm. accurate yeah yeah i am um, i care a lot about um i, I authenticity I, I'm, I keep saying this word <laughs> over and over again it's like i'm sort of hammering it into my own head be authentic be authentic but i i i care about um certainly um giving people a, a a broader portrait of a woman. Um, first of all, it's more satisfying for me as a writer or, or an actor um, and director now, but I, I feel like that's a responsibility as well. And I feel like in, in there's always been really brilliantly fleshed out stories in theater for women, although admittedly all of them are mental um uh, but you sort of you do get you still start to understand why they have arrived at that place and it's happening more in tv i think film weirdly has got quite a long way journey to go with that at the moment everyone's so preoccupied with sort of superheroes and women and just people generally being strong and powerful um and i just find that sort of messaging really unhelpful and so in my quest with my work is uh, as much as it's to sort of satisfy me and almost just appeal to my mates mm -hmm. I do I do want to like you know sort of talk a more broad um sorry more specifically about um you know women in a way that's you know with the comedy that we have the 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 
the cost of what it, it means to be female and and a lot of that isn't easy to watch or to receive it's not it's not shiny it's not at all palatable and sometimes it's really people find it quite unlikable and and, and sometimes people don't um don't like um things that are complex in certain in that way or char female characters um, that are complex in that way because it's um they want to see us being golden and um motherly I think no they do I think there is still this expectation for whether it's you know women in real life who are in the public eye or not you know just everyone's on social media now so everyone's got that sort of platform yeah absolutely acceptable for women to be good and you know benevolent and sweet mm. and you know not really have a massive opinion and you know I'm, I'm i'm broadly generalizing but i do think a lot of it really does still exist and certainly you know you can see that in tv and film whereas your portrayal of life it is messy and life is messy like mm. it is that it's it's never as shiny and lovely as it looks in a big hollywood film or on instagram it's just not like it is a massive mess and i i think your work is a true celebration of that it's, mm. it's that mess and going you're just normalizing it like this yeah. is what life's about and you know and i loved in you know I, I dm'd you after i watched the first episode of i hate susie yeah I, to some extent i was dreading watching because i knew it was going to just like smash me around the head and go like oh my god how much of this resonates from my own story you know yeah. other women in the public eye who were like ah it was so accurate like so many little nuanced moments were so accurate and you know and look and unpicking those what we I guess would deem tricky emotions is mm. what you are an expert at what what interests you about what we might deem as a negative or a tricky emotion within your work mm. Um, well, first of all, how funny it is to watch, <laughs> like it, it's horrible to experience, Yeah. Um, but it's very entertaining to watch. Um, and so there is that, I mean, I've got quite a, a bleak sense of humor and, and Lucy who wrote I Hate Susie um, shares that. And there's just something slightly more entertaining entertaining about it but also I just think you just want to I don't know I just I have a desire to reach through the screens and sort of shake people um and, and hope that they they connect with it you know and 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 if anything that there is a sense of relief I guess I guess it's I guess the instinct is one of sharing um um it's just but it but it is it's 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 not everyone's sort of cup of tea but I think it's something I'm going to keep mining and who knows where it will end <laughs> but uh, but but um but it but people seem to resp you know l largely seem to respond well to it um yeah I, it's yeah I guess you know like you're I, I think you know we have a sort of a similar desire in a sense that we're really willing to be vulnerable and you know we know that you you know your work certainly with rare beasts and i hate susie aren't also biographical they're, mm. they're emotions that you understand there are yeah. circumstances that you can draw upon but i think you know you're willing to be vulnerable in your work i'm certainly willing to you know i'll just t say anything these days i don't really care i'll just you know yeah. again, going back to authenticity i want to i want to share with with people i want them like you say to have that sense of relief to normalize stuff that might feel you know things that you're massively worried about or ashamed about or whatever and I think vulnerability essentially like you know I'm a huge fan of Brene Brown and I yeah me I too her, oh I love her I love her talks I, I love her books and I think when looking at shame which again is something that you explore massively in Rare Beasts and I Hate Susie you know you've got that that really heavy emotion shame none of us like to feel it or we hate it and none of us really want to look at it but it's there and we've all experienced it and I think the sort of connectivity lies in the vulnerability you know like sharing what you know and what and what you've experienced how do you feel you know after making something as personal as Rare Beast you know your baby mm -hmm. something you've worked on so hard you wrote it you directed it you star in it do you feel vulnerable letting that into the wild yeah, probably more so than anything else I've done because they're because I'm so much more invested from the ground up and it's been a labor of love for like 
eight years really um and you just hope that um people understand understand it's sort of uh, quest although it's not it's not a piece of work that's like you must feel this it's more of a do you feel this yeah, yeah. um and so and so yeah there is there is a lot more tension around it for me this time whereas and again with I hate Susie because yes it's not autobiographical but it's it's coming from five years of um counseling my best friend and her counseling me and it's a culmination of the our you know talk conversations we had moving out of our late 20s into our early 30s which felt like really significant um for, for many reasons so um oh god where was i going with that well i guess you know it's, well talking about vulnerability it, yes you've landed in a place where you're comfortable being vulnerable? Yeah, I, I think so. It feels sort of like the only way forward um, for me. Um, and that's taken like 20 years um, of, 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 of work and of life um, uh, to not be afraid of the, um, yeah, the sort of the, the sharing, the, vul the vulnerability that feel, that does feel, it, to be honest, it feels so important to me um, that I hope other people get it, but it, it's, it matters that it's important to me. Do you know what I mean? Because um, yeah, I please. think it's important that it starts there. And also sort of lifting the lid on things and and having a good old laugh about them. Um, yeah, it's, it's just it just feels like the, the, the right time for me to be um, doing that. And, and it's um, and I'm personally getting so much out of it. But if I'm really honest, a lot of it, a lot of it comes from and coincides with um, do, doing some sort of self-examination. I don't think if I'd done that, I would be making the work that I'm making right now. And I also don't know which course my life would have taken. Um, and um, so into my, uh, like my early 30s where a, a, a moment in my life where I thought I have to start looking at these sort of patterns of behavior that aren't serving me well I have to start looking at um, what it is about um, me that or, or my circumstances that leaves me feeling a certain way why can't I move through certain emotions and it means you have to go right back and it's yeah. really hard it's so much fucking work yeah. um but i you know and not all of it works and the changes are subtle they haven't been like monumental for me they've been really smooth subtle um um uh, shifts um but all of that has informed my work i think and and positively um you just and that's why I love your recent book because it's like just having the courage to say what you actually feel and saying no to people instead of yes all the time I think there it, there it, 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 it sort of rebuilds you as a person it was um it's been a very um it's been a it's been my 30s have been tough but I feel way more equipped and is that because I think when you're doing that self inventory analysis, like you're you're going in, you're checking out your past, you know, I'm I'm still doing all this now. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's, I don't think it ever ends once you've started. That's like you, you dive in, and then that is it for life. That you're you're constantly willing to to look at, like you say, your patterns of behaviour and, and dig around a bit. But do you think you know perhaps you're comfy in that vulnerability now and able to do this work that you feel so authentically attached to and so proud of and rightly so because you've got more acceptance around yourself and your past yeah 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 I needed to, <laughs> I needed to do a lot of work <laughs> Same. and now I'm addicted to the work <laughs> like I'm, ad I'm addicted to the like oh what next like I've gone through like a number of um therapeutic like practices I've done like uh, um big workshops I've done like analysis I've done I've, I've done tapping therapy I mean that's what's in that's that was the idea behind rare beast that was sort oh. of directly lifted from my own therapy like therapy experience that one wasn't um very effective for me <laughs> um uh, but um but I had to sort of feature it in the film because it's like god we're going to such lengths just to try and hold our shit together I know 
I know. And we all are collectively. Like, that's the beauty of it. You know, I think you realise it. And I'm sure you've had that feedback from your own work that once you do share something that feels a bit scary or deeply personal or, or you know, you explore tricky emotions in your work and other people go, oh, my God, me too. You realise, you know, no one's coping brilliantly. We might assume yeah. they are. Oh, God, look at them. They look so shiny and sorted over there. But everyone's sorting their own shit out and you know like you say we're going to all manner of lengths to to try and do it and you know i don't think there's no there's no bad thing i think it's it's great to experiment and explore and and try new yeah. things work out what works for you absolutely and someone once told me just just to have a because there is still so much stigma around it and someone once told me just to have a dose of curiosity about it instead of yeah. looking at it like a life long um affliction and something that you know you don't put much stock in or you just think is you know it depends sort of which cloth you're cut from and where you're from what your background is and everything for, for me our family are stoics so you don't really talk about stuff and there yeah. is a there you know I I can say this out loud and I don't feel bad about it there is a there is an attitude around therapy that is um isn't one of sort of goodwill you know it's um it's it's they're critical of it and they're and suspicious <laughs> they're suspicious of it and that's that's really hard but someone just went like look if you literally just go along and even like you know you're going to get something out of it just 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 have a dose of curiosity and when I when I felt when I took that to those early sessions um that was very very helpful it's just how do you how do you get it for everyone do you know what I mean like how how can everyone access that support that's I think that, that will hopefully get better the more that we're you know using technology to reach more people you know it's still there's still yeah. huge uh, disparity for so many yeah. people not being able to whether it is try a new therapy or whatever I'm I'm trying in my own tiny way to help make it you know more absolutely what it is. but it's you know it, it's definitely hard but but I think also on a generational tip it is tricky because if I say to my mum oh I spoke to you know said therapist or whoever I've seen that week what's wrong with you I know oh, like a lot but you know we won't <laughs> go into that now it's like this is just a, a weekly or well, a daily endeavor to, it doesn't have to be like an SOS moment which I think perhaps some of the older generation will see it as like and as you say it's geographically where you're from from where mm. you're brought up etc and you know we're both from working class backgrounds where mm. that you, that wasn't the done thing and I think hopefully as time moves on we will just see that any kind of I don't know what you want to call it if it's mindfulness or or mm. you know how are you with mindfulness um, you're quite good at it aren't you well I probably appear to be better than I am I'll be honest with you I think you know, I, I don't meditate every day. I don't do any one thing every day. I know yeah. I should, yeah. but I will find every other excuse to stay uh, busy. Same. Um, and I think that's why I'm still on the quest to keep talking about it and putting it out there because I know it will help me so much if I apply a level of discipline, which I'm not good at. You know, I I don't know. I think that's why I'm I'm still trying lots of different things out yeah um and it's not you know it's not especially at the moment like we're homeschooling you know you're homeschooling oh my god life's it, it mad life's absolutely mad so sometimes I do just want to put a film on and not think about anything rather than oh, no. meditate so you know I I like most people dip in and out there's huge imperfections with with how I you know I know I know so much but I still apply so little to my own life yeah me too me too but you know it's it's just all I feel like the mind uh, the, the the mindfulness is like oh, it's just it's there I can see it in the future yeah. but I'm yeah. not ready for it yet I think that's I feel the same you know like one day when hopefully I'm not working as much and I live in the countryside you know pipe dream and I'm growing carrots and stuff that's that's where that's where the mind that's where it is <laughs> <laughs> like a long way down the line when you need oh, it the least that's well, when you'll use least, it it's gonna come right into play <laughs> no, I the irony and I do this for a living like what I mean it's madness but this you know we're know. complex human beings we um, are we're so and complex and you know there's there's other parts of that 
human complexity that you show so beautifully in Rare Beasts, especially around motherhood. And I think, yeah. again, it's something that we're, we, we're reticent to talk about. We, we feel like we can't say we're struggling. We can't say we're finding it difficult. We can't mention that our kids aren't brilliant at certain things. And this is, you know, perhaps only in the last 10 years or 20 years, depending on what school your kids are at, where that pressure's really applied, like, you know, yeah what are the milestones and where are you at and are you dealing with it well and are you juggling and oh my god you know it's just I, again it's one of those conversations that doesn't happen that openly because people are I, I guess and I I'm saying this from personal experience mm. scared of judgment because there's mm. so much judgment around parenting oh my god it's so bad even my mum comments on that it's just like you know she's just I don't envy this at no. all it looks so much harder when than when you guys were around as children um which was just like their life just remained the same and we were just fitting into it yeah. and arguably that there were a lot of downsides to that <laughs> but um but but there was a simplicity to it that I think my mum acknowledges and she sees me really grapple with um because yeah I mean it's it's con it's 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 constant work and um and people still want to view women and mothers as these and I you know I understand I understand why but it, it's like you can't be more than one thing emotionally um you and and I just or you should be able to do it all and you should be it's not enough just to live your life you have to be really successful now these might be pressures that I just put on myself although I think they are I certainly see it in my immediate circle of friends um it's it's and 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 that's something yeah as you said I talk about in Rare Beast this this sort of cultural push and messaging that we we can be brilliant and have it all and do it all and and everything is will have as much meaning um as the next thing and it's like it's just it, it that's just not possible it's just not true it's not true this idea of striking a balance is is it's almost unachievable and I think as soon as you let go and 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 just accept that things become that there are sort of useful changes but this woman once said to me that you can't have three things you can't have like a really um successful career um really really strong ties with your kids and a loving intimate relationship with your partner one of those things will always fall apart and I think that's kind of true I think it's really hard to do all of those things at the level that the world expects you to yeah. do them. Um, you know, I can I can honestly say when I go to work, my the kids really struggle. That's just the truth. When I'm at work all day long, that shows in my kids. I, um, you know, all it shows in my relationship with my partner or if I'm not at work and I'm with the kids all the time, that also shows in me, you know, it's like, I agree. It's I really, agree. it's, it's people there. I feel like we have a responsibility to just be a bit more, a bit more honest about what that actually looks like. It's like, yeah, I am a mother at the school gate, but I'm also a sexual being and I am wild sometimes and I behave like an idiot as well and yeah. I have really dark thoughts that aren't circling um you know sort of this sort of bright shiny golden huge thing with my kid all the time like I have thoughts that aren't about all of that um you know it's I, I don't know I so agree and, and I and it goes also even outside of those three pillars which are you know so important because you know I absolutely feel the same and I know that that trio is so hard to balance alone you know and I will often go to my husband on a Sunday night before we've got a manic week I'm just like I can't actually do this I can't do this and I often say to him I don't know how to be a wife I don't know how <laughs> like I don't know what to get I can't give you anything I've got nothing to give you like no. I say it all the time and then that is that is actually tricky enough in itself without then going oh my god what about 
like seeing some friends or like having any sort of social life and I have really let that one go like I see a yeah. very small group of friends that I absolutely love and they're essentially family you know they're my oldest schoolmates or people that I love dearly but I have pissed people off and I have to them possibly let them down because I haven't gone to a birthday party or... are you the flake in the friendship group not in my core friendship group, thank God, but probably to a lot of other people. I'm the person yeah. that just doesn't go to birthday parties because I can't fit it in right yeah. now. Like maybe down the line when I'm growing carrots and doing meditating, I'll, I'll be yeah. back out on the party scene. But right now it's gone. And I think, again, there's just that pressure that you've got to be able to do it all. You've got to have the shiny social life, be a great wife, be the perfect mum, cooking all the great food and then be on it at work. You know, yeah. it isn't possible. It's impossible. I it's just, exhausting. I find, it's so exhausting. I find myself like on a Sunday night, well, I cry at the end of pretty much every day and I spend an hour in bed going, I'll be better tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be better, I swear. <laughs> I'm going to take a completely different task. <laughs> I'm going to read my parenting manual tonight and things will be things will be different tomorrow <laughs> or I just spend Sunday nights going this is me <laughs> this is who I am I'm sorry it's so hard it's and so the kids bonkers. constantly going are you on your period it's like <laughs> it's like every day <laughs> are you really still on your period <laughs> It's been a 10 year period, guys. I'm just working my way through it. That's what it's felt like. I know, I know, I know. It's all bonkers. And I, and I agree that the conversation needs to, to be um, more honest and essentially without judgment. Otherwise, we're going nowhere. You know, we're not going to we're not going to feel more connected or supported at all as we all mm. try and do well at work and be decent parents and partners, friends, whatever. You know, we've, we've got to chat about it. Um, as I said, like a little while ago in our chat, you know, I've sort of known you on off since we were kids. And, you know, I posted that picture on Instagram oh God, I don't know, I a year ago picture. of us when we were like 16. <laughs> I mean, such cute little faces. And and to me, you know, I, I would interview you ad hoc over the years and, and you always seem to be, at, at, you know, from the outside, someone sort of shiny, beautiful, confident person. And, and I felt massively like an imposter in this sort of Wembley market, cheap top and, and an awful bunches, like awful hair and a dodgy cut fringe. Oh, and you, I love that you. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm still making peace with that me. But, um, <laughs> but, you, but you just seemed, and I'm sure it isn't the case, but just to have it all together and so mature and so confident. But I wonder how, how did you actually feel at that time? Um, I think that probably in the beginning of, uh, that time I did feel those things um I think I think I probably felt quite self-assured um I was uh, willful and um up for it and um felt quite good I think things changed later on um um sort of when I was 18 um I think that's when things started to look quite different and and I didn't feel those I didn't feel those emotions at all I felt I felt reclusive I had an eating disorder I um was really angry and that was just the beginning of a very angry <laughs> uh journey um and um and and then that's those those feelings would come and go for the rest of my life I guess um but I think I think when we were hanging out and and working together in those early stages it was probably quite I think that was I I, I think although you always remember things slightly differently but I think I was in, in a relatively good spot it just changed later on and then it took a massive nosedive and was that because you just sort of naturally hit a burnout do you think yeah because I was exhausted because we were working as children mm. and and on in I think I, I unrivaled scheduling like I don't yeah. know anyone who worked as hard as I did when I was 15 I don't know I I, I just don't know anyone who does that um, and I've certainly never worked that hard since. So I think it was a combination of burnout 
the trauma of becoming like really, really famous, um, complete disconnect with my family, um, a sense, a lack of control or agency in my life in any aspect of my life, hence the eating disorder. Um, and what else? Um, and also the fact that I was a teenager. So I was like physically changing and emotionally and psychologically changing so much. And do you think a lot of the, the sort of negatives that came out of that were a reaction to the fame or was it just the relentlessness of it? I think it definitely was a combination of all of that. I mean, when I think about the life that I lived as a child in Kilburn with an 18 hour working day and um, and never seeing my family in my formative years, which at the time felt like a massive tick to me. <laughs> um, but uh, but I see how that's negatively impacted my life and that 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 um, distance and um not having that at that age has really affected my adult life um, in ways that I've only just come to terms with in my mid to late thirties. So um, I think it was, I think fame is a very, very, very unhealthy beast. And um, I certainly wouldn't encourage my kids to go anywhere near it oh my God. Uh, at, at a I... young age. And, and, you know, it might be that that um that you know my experience is is one that I felt like I I just escaped from um but it could have gone one of two ways I feel like I escaped it quite well um I think when I don't know if you've watched that Britney documentary have you watched mm, it yeah I mean I sort of recognize that world and I'm sure you do um and you just think, God, it's so easy to not come out of that alive. I know. Or, or come out of that with like any sense of trust and um, without some crippling, you know, mental health issue. And also the outside noise is so loud. And I think, you know, God, we were so lucky we didn't have social media I know. at that point. Because I don't think I would have stayed in the career. I honestly don't know. You know, I'm not even built for it now. I, yeah. I just sort of don't pay too much attention to it. But I, I'm not built for it. I'm not thick skinned at all. I am highly sensitive, and I really don't know if I could have stayed in it. You know, and, and you, you had fame and success on a different level to me. You know, you you were flying around the place. It was, it was really really full on. But I think we both, you know, had that experience of it being really weird as teens, making some you know, I certainly made loads of strange decisions in my twenties and drank too much. And I was mm. for a decade and, you know, mm. certainly that reaction to the lack of control that yeah. massively with me, I'm out of control. This is the only thing that I have that I can control. Mm. And then in your thirties going, Oh my God, I need to look at all of that and work out what bits I'm still reacting on now yeah and it, you know like you said earlier it's, it's a lot of work and it it's it's certainly not easy but you know it again you know we reacted in really different ways in our 20s I was just getting pissed and but I was still desperately wanting to succeed I was still desperately wanting to to work and to climb like this ascent that doesn't really exist whereas again as the outsider you to me sort of made mature decisions I mean you, you sort of step down from your singing career at that mm. point and you didn't work for a long time out of choice you went traveling you got married mm. it looked to me as a, a sort of a liberating period of your life did it feel like that yeah definitely yeah um it was what I feel what I describe as my sort of healing years which is crazy considering the fact that I was living a, a very sort of flashy life but also a you know, very hedonistic one, um, but f it's what I needed to do. I needed to go to the pub and be around mates and overeat or just eat, <laughs> eat and um, have late nights and not brush my hair and put on weight and um, read books and uh, dig a pond I needed to do all of those things that from the outside I think people weirdly look looked upon as um me being out of control and and losing a sense of myself and being 
um, somehow manipulated when it couldn't have that couldn't have been further from the truth. It was it was it was they were some of my happiest um, teen early twenty years, um, and I needed them so badly and it also gave me space to reinvest with acting which is what I initially wanted to do I just think if you don't take time out I you're not growing at growing at all but I'm aware of the fact that I am someone who does have spells of overworking and and trying to satisfy this part of this in this sort of restlessness trying to satisfy this part of me that I am trying to get to know um in terms of what drives that um but I but thanks for saying that because I I think Sometimes I think so. I was speaking to people yesterday who were like, oh, are you a workaholic? And actually, I, I don't know that I am. I, I, I definitely have had big periods of my life where I've, yeah, as you say, got married or um, and were having kids, you know, that I didn't work for ages around that period of time. Um, Do you think that would have been asked of a male actor? I doubt it. Probably not. No. probably not no because they're just at work whereas again it goes back to that balance yeah are you a workaholic you know it's that pressure isn't it and, and yeah you know I feel the same I love my work I don't want to be ashamed of that I love what I do I feel so lucky to love it and I am really driven and I am ambitious I want mm. what I'm doing to do well I don't think that has to be a bad thing or a negative no I know I mean I've only ever heard ambition be used against me as Absolutely. a sort of of a uh as a criticism of myself it's like if I, I've heard ambitious bitch or ambitious horse so many times in my life and I, I I'm just like fuck off <laughs> <laughs> yes fuck, fuck off, off mate <laughs> fuck off mate absolutely because well, no absolutely not absolutely not I, I again it's just um but then trying to explain, you know, it's hard because you then, it's funny trying to explain loving your work to your kids because you're like, oh, I'm going to work. I love my job, <laughs> you know, like, yes, I get paid for it and, and I need to, and, and, I, and I need money, but I also love what I do. You know, you just, it's just I just can't be normal around talking about it to anyone. It's just, it's like this thing, this thing I have to be ashamed of. I know. And there's, I often have guilt around it that I've made <sighs> that choice because I like what I do. I think, you know, there's, it's complex, especially, you know, as you say, when you're trying to explain it to your kids, it's, oh my God, it's an absolute minefield. Um, do you feel like, you know, perhaps having a very extreme childhood and then essentially, you know, in your late teens, early twenties, a period of normalcy, you know, people might have thought it was out of control, That, but that's only in vast contrast to how controlled your life was previously. You had some normalcy, but do you feel like you've, you have got a bit more balance now? You can, you can have a bit of both in your life. Oh, my life is like, I, my life now is sort of the, is a perfect mix of, um, well, look, my my personal life is is kind of quite small and um, manageable, and that side of things is just I've hit a sweet spot with that. I like where I live. I like my circle of friends. I don't I don't stray beyond it really. I don't like the sort of um, the entertainment world beyond m me doing my job um and I don't feel like I have to do any of that stuff anymore and for me that's that's been um that's sort of been a real peaceful um realization and I you know I that balance it, it, that that's the only good sense of balance I have the work one I'm still trying to well just accept for what it is or just not do it <laughs> yeah that's it just accept that it is going to be this thing that is um because there's no sort of way to dip in and out certainly not with writing and directing or something like I hate Susie which we created from the ground up together and it's an enormous amount of work um you know there is no way to do that um uh, in a sort of uh 
part-time fashion there isn't it's like 14 hour days out of the house and um I've sort of decided just after um doing I Hate Season Rebbies back to back that I just cannot work like that at, any, anymore or um and and it's for myself as well it's for my own mental health but physical health as well I just can't I think it is a sense of achievement but mostly I look back at that period of time and think which was quite recent and just think it's just too much it was just too much I'm glad it's there but 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 was there a way that I could have potentially spread that over a, a number of years probably um yeah I'm sort That's of the whole thing with being creative isn't it is there's often if you've got the idea you have to run with it then and there because that's enough... true that is true you often can't park things because they just the potency of that that idea I think goes I, I, I feel similarly if I've got like a book idea I, I, I have to do it then otherwise but you've got so up. many books how 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 are you doing it all well so you you don't sleep do you well no I'm not a great sleeper but you know I don't do a lot of the stuff I used to do so people might still yeah be presenter. I don't I haven't presented a tv show in bloody ages I don't really do that stuff so I do, do you like time. not doing that stuff I do you like that. not presenting yeah yeah because I you know I don't really get offered that much stuff these days because I think people just don't think I'm interested and I don't know how much of me could stand there talking about something I don't care about care about so yeah you know, this stuff I do so I'm you know I, I do have more time but like you I think you know getting that balance it's it's you know we're, it's a it's a lovely problem to have we're it's really lucky because we love what we do it is just you know I think for any parents out there getting that balance and feeling like you know we're not going to be judged that there lies the problem but you know we're all doing our best we're all trying our best and you know you're doing it exceptionally you know I, I love what you've created over the last couple of years that we've been able to watch it's been an absolute treat and I, oh, I love seeing so. how you use your creativity and how you channel what you know it's it's truly extraordinary yeah. so thank you so much and, yeah. and really thank you so much for talking to me today I'm quite moved sitting down with you I mean I didn't sleep last night um either but I, I also feel like I just get such a like I just get so emotional when we like can connect even in these little sort of sl sliding in dms you know or just seeing those moments I don't know that I have anyone from that period of time that I do with it's not like something we do extensively <laughs> either but it's like it's quite moving for me to sit down with you well, so same. thanks same. well thank you I, I so enjoyed it and um I can't wait to see what you do next I love what you're oh, doing Billy. I love what you're doing Take oh. it easy, my friend.